Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And with Kaman launching Master of the Universe in two days, uh, two days from whenever, well, this video goes up, not necessarily from when you watch this video, I, I figured it'd be a good time to talk about 10 Kaman games I totally wasn't going to back, but ended up backing. Now, if you're a viewer of the channel, a longtime viewer, then you probably are thinking, come on, Alex, you are always going to back every single Kaman game. And you're mostly right, but in all seriousness, from these 10 games, with one arguable exception, we'll talk about it, I really thought that I wasn't going to back these games. I really thought that I was going to pass on them because why would I want that game? And I'll I'll get into each of these as we go through it, but we'll explain each one. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. Just, just you know, just, we'll talk with them as you come. Starting off with Hate. Hate was a come on game that I wasn't going to back to the point that I didn't back it. In fact, it arguably shouldn't be on this list. But I did go hunting on the secondhand market before the game even arrived at people's hands. Hate was a game, uh, The Art in the Rural by Adrian Smith, and it's going to be a primarily two-player skirmish game. One which I actually finally got to the table for the first time, maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, for the first time I got this one to the table. And so, Hate is a game, though, that I didn't feel the need for another skirmish game. I didn't feel the need for a giant over-the-top miniature skirmish game. And the theme, the world of Hate, which is over-the-top goriness of eating bodies to sustain whatever... It wasn't a, a game that I felt the need to back, and so I responsibly, well actually, to be fair, I technically did back it initially. This was coming off me pledging for Rising Sun, and so I got the notifications from Kaman. We have another Kickstarter, we have more miniatures. This was before I really had gotten into the Kickstarter game, and so it was tempting, and it was interesting, but that $100, $120 base pledge slowly blew up with all the optional buys, and I didn't care enough to dive into it, and so I walked away. And then hunted it down later. That's that's what I did. Before the game ever arrived, I went on the secondhand market to find someone selling their copy and paid the premium price to get my hands on this game because I wasn't going to back it. But I did anyway. I don't know what pulled me in at the end. I don't know what it is. And, and my own first impressions of it, and it is very much first impressions because I only have one game, is I am enjoy. I have enjoyed my one play of hate so far. I'm intrigued as to where it goes. I'm intrigued to how it develops. But... Overall, I, it's one that I definitely think is worth examining. Whether I keep it or not, I don't know. I think it's 50-50. It could go either way. I really need to dive into the campaign play because I think that's where the meat of this game is. The meat that apparently the various characters are eating off each other's bodies because that's the kind of world hate is. It's obscene. It's insane. It is gory. It is over the top. None of that I care for or against. For me, it's just a question of whether I'm going to pull this off the shelf when I could pull Ramen Bones off the shelf, when I could pull a dozen other skirmish games that I really enjoy. Uh, Rainbow Six, Six Siege from Mythic Games and that arrives. There are a lot of good skirmish games, and any single one has to tell me why this one. What are you doing differently or special or better that others aren't? But hey, that's all tangential to the fact that I did genuinely not plan on backing this game to the point that I didn't, and then instead did. The number two is going to be Cthulhu Death May Die, and this is where I really did start diving down the Kickstarter rabbit hole. Cthulhu Death May Die marks my descent into madness, so to speak, a line I've used before because it's true. I find it particularly interesting or funny or amusing that the game that really started not just backing games on Kickstarter. I had five, ten Kickstarters under my belt by the time I backed Cthulhu Death May Die, but they were sporadic. They were here and there. They weren't following any rhyme or reason, and then Cthulhu Death May Die happened... And I started looking at everything as a potential back, which was a mistake that, well, it's, I mean, arguably it wasn't a mistake because you can argue that it led to me getting involved in the YouTube channel and getting involved in talking about Kickstarter. So really, if you think about it, it's all paid for itself. Another fine justification for what I'm doing. But Cthulhu Death May Die, I, I was totally 100% not going to back this because why would I? I have never enjoyed or loved any Arkham Mythos game until this point. I, I've been tempted by them, but I never dived into them. They all represented a, a concept of a game that never really developed into what I wanted to spend my time on, what I wanted to play. And Cthulhu Death May Die had this promise of, you're not an investigator, you're not taking your time, you're punching Cthulhu in the face, which is a very different premise of a game. Something that's far more tempting in its own different way, and something that I thought, maybe, I mean, it's not going to be good, maybe, and then I backed it. And then again, keep in mind, I was still new to Kickstarter, so once again, like with hate, I was surprised as the pledges started piling up. Now, I didn't get the Real Our Rising pledge. I don't need the giant hulking Cthulhu statue. I still have no interest in the giant hulking Cthulhu statue. I mean, if, you know, come on, sends me one, I'll figure out where to put it, but I'm certainly not paying $150 extra to get that. But overall, 
It's one that I backed. I was tempted by the optional buys, the pledges started showing up, everything else, all the uh, extras that you could get your hands on started showing up and tempting me as I as I backed this game. And I love this game. I didn't think I would. For a long time, I regretted my pledge. For a long time, I wanted to walk away from it and wish that I, I had buyer's remorse. I was like, why? Why in the world did I back this game when I didn't even care about the, the, the art is nice, the miniatures were okay. It wasn't my genre, so to speak. It was a theme that I actively did not like. But then when it finally was showing up, I started watching some gameplay videos again and started getting pulled into it. And then it did show up and my wife and I played it and non-stop we went through. We actually never have finished the campaign. We've gone through, I guess, 70, 80% of the campaign of the between all the boxes. We finished the first box. We're most of the way through the second one. And we haven't done the three bonus scenarios. So we're like, how many options there are? We've done maybe 15 different scenarios or whatever it is out of 18. I think that's right. I could be wrong on the exact number. But we actually have started diving into it again from the beginning, going through a bit of a campaign as every time we lose a game, our characters permanently die. So that leads an interesting twist to your games of Cthulhu Death May Die. Overall, it was one that I had no intention of backing. When I did back it, I had buyer's remorse. And now that I actually have it, I'm just waiting for Season 3 to show up. And to be clear, that's not a spoiler that Season 3 is showing up. I just, I have to assume that, I mean, this is an incredibly well-rated game on Board Game Geek. People love this game, and the campaign did well. I have to imagine a Season 3 is in the works at some point in some way, because a lot of people want to dive back into this game. A lot of people who never had the chance to get the Kickstarter version of this game want to have that chance. It's basically printing money. Why wouldn't they? But either way, number 3 brings us to Project Elite. Come on, announce Project Elite at the end of one of their campaigns. They have a history of... I mean, they actually stopped doing it in recent years, I think. But they generally have had a past trend of saying, Campaign is done, now here's a picture of something coming up. And Project Elite was one of their announcements, and I couldn't care less. I had never played the original Project Elite. I hadn't even heard of the original Project Elite. I, I looked it up when I saw the picture, and I was like, Oh, it's a... It's a real-time game with more miniatures. I mean, I don't care. The miniatures of that game don't look particularly appealing. The art, I mean, the game is rated well. All those things, I just wasn't pulled in by what was going on there. But then more information kept coming out. I had no intent of backing this game. I had no intent of getting it whatsoever. I don't need it at all. But if you look behind me over here, it's somewhere over my shoulder over there. You can see it on the shelf because... It's really, really excellent. I got my hands. What I did instead of before the campaign came out, I, I was tempted. I was unsure. So I traded for a copy of the original Project Elite and I gave it a shot. And it was such an epic experience. It was such an amazing game. Very different. Not one that hits the table often for me, but one that was really, really well done and gave me an experience like no other game as you cooperatively, frantically roll your dice to try to figure out how you're going to move your people around the board and defeat the various aliens and do all that and survive in this game. It's one that does not hit the table often. It's one that I want to hit the table more for sure. But overall, by the time Project League did make its way to Kickstarter, I had played the original and I saw why it was that Kaman was reprinting this game, why they were taking a game that was amazing in what it was doing, but subpar in the art and miniatures and all that, and then taking it to the next level with their version of Project Elite. Now, like many Kaman games, I haven't actually dived into all the expansion content or yet, just because it does see the table infrequently. This is one where I think the core box for many people is going to be more than enough, but I'm still kind of happy I have all the rest for if or when this actually does see the table more often. But Project Elite was one that I was not going to back, and then played it and decided to back it. And number four is going to be Blood Rage Digital. Blood Rage Digital, and to be fair, this is not because I had no interest in the game, but rather because they announced Blood Rage Digital, and I was like, I don't care. I'm not backing a Steam version of Blood Rage. I don't need a digital copy of my favorite game, or X favorite game of all time. It's holding a number two spot currently. But overall, while I love Blood Rage, and while I, I want all the things that are Blood Rage, all the things only extend to the physical components. And so when Come On announced Blood Rage Digital, I thought to myself, well, that's... That's something I'm not going to spend any money on. But it turns out 11,213 people spent $769,000 on Blood Rage Digital. Although more specifically, and this is the part that's interesting, it's because Kaman basically offered you physical goodies. You can see over here from the Digital Viking Pledge, the people who only wanted Blood Rage Digital, that's 1,183 people. The vast majority of people, and by the way, those 1,000 I'm still kind of surprised by, but hey, it works. The vast majority of people, 8,444 people, 
decided that they were backing this game not for the digital copy that's an extra that's nice but rather for everything else for all the promos and expansions and content that they gave the deluxe vacation the upgrades to to improve your game for those who had missed the original blood rage kickstarter which was well most of us and that $60 pledge, by the way, your copy of the Blood Rage Digital's Extra, if you have that box, you can sell it for $150, $200 bucks easily. There's a demand for that. Like, there's a demand for anything Blood Rage, the, con the, the, the content here. And it further adds to your experience. Now, it's one that I have played with the extras. I like some of them more than others. I love that boar. That boar that shoves into someone else's spot is a great little character. Some of the extra monsters I don't care quite as much about. But overall, I wasn't planning on blacking, backing Blood Rage Digital as long as it was just blood rage digital and by the way before we move on that might be a hint to something else that's later on this list so so technically i got you know baited and switched wasn't backing one game then they showed me another and i did back the other next up number five we have bloodborne the board game this is again a game that was announced and i was like i don't care it's a video game ip that i've never played and then the weirdest thing happened to me because like project elite before it I kind of wanted to investigate further. Now, there was no prior Bloodborne game. I mean, there was a card game, but that has nothing to do with the board game. But what I did instead is I went ahead and I bought the Bloodborne video game. And I dove into that to give that a shot and see if it's something that was for me. And this is, again, something I've said before on the channel, and I'll always get a few comments about it, but I did not like the Bloodborne video game at all. I didn't like what it was doing, but I... I was pulled in by the world, I was pulled in by the content, I was pulled in by the premise of it, while not liking the execution of it, at least for myself. I want games that are more about the hack and slash fun and not the slow pacing methodical battle and then running past those enemies when you inevitably die. I don't like the principle of how Bloodborne operates and I don't like the dark, there's the Souls games in general, which is, you know, they're well loved, they have their audience, I'm not that audience. And I blacked the back the Bloodborne board game after playing that. Initially, I had no interest, same like many of these on the list, but then I tried it, I saw the world, I saw the promise, and I thought, that will work better in a board game. Turns out, by the way, it doesn't. This game is actually true to the IP, and I think it does a great job of making it feel like I'm playing the IP, or in other words, I still love the world, I still want to play it, but I don't actually want to play it, if that makes sense. This is one that I got in one play of the game, and was like, oh, they did a great job capturing the video game. Time to go ahead and get rid of this giant stack of boxes and find something else to play instead. That's going to be Bloodborne the board game from Come On. Number six, still hasn't shown up yet, and it's going to be Trudvang Legends. Another one that I saw, the images, I saw the graphics, and I wasn't back in this campaign, and sure, they basically showed up, they went on Kickstarter, and this is not one that I even looked into further. I was like, I, don't, I just don't care, I wasn't pulled in by the art, the world, any of that, when they announced it. But then they had their Kickstarter, and they had a day one early bird pledge, and of course I jumped on the early bird pledge. My standard rule, if you've watched any of my videos, is going to be, always jump on the early bird pledge as soon as you can, and then change your mind later. Drop it if you want to, it's all good. And so I did that. But then I saw the updates, and I kept being pulled in more and more as things went on, as they showed us more about the game, as they showed us the way cards slot into and build out the world, as they showed us the various miniatures. I started to fall in love with the, the lore, the art, the miniatures of this game in a way that I hadn't cared about at all. I, was, I backed this game fully intending to cancel my early bird, fully intending to walk away, and instead I backed it, and I'm just sitting here patiently thinking, hey, come on, take your time give me a good game, because they are taking their time, to be very clear. This is one of the longer-lasting Come On games that's sitting there just slowly going through iterations of development of development and whatnot, and it's one that I'm looking forward to it arriving, but I have plenty of narrative, mechanical, combination games to keep me busy in the meantime, so I'll, I'll see this when it shows up. I'll do an unboxing, I'll cover the game, I'll eventually dive into it. I do need more time to play these campaign games, but it's one that I went from, I'm cancelling my pledge, I'm just locking it in just in case, to getting an all-in pledge, which I still think I shouldn't have done, because I definitely, definitely don't need an all-in pledge. But either way, that's going to be, uh, come on, that's going to be Trudvang from Come On. Number seven, I think we're up to seven. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, I think we're up to seven. Number seven is going to be Come On Comics. This is the one I teased at, the hint of, if I wasn't going to back Blood Rage Digital, I also wasn't going to back Come On Comics. There's no point, there's no need, I don't need that content. Now, before we even talk with the rest of the campaign, I have obviously backed it, it's on this list, it's on this video, and I will say, from the one comic I've actually read so far, which is going to be the Zombicide Invader comic, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I'd pay for them directly, but I'm for all for Come On lining up another series of, you know, let's give you a World of Smog comic, and and a Rum and Bones comic, all with their associated mini miniatures. If you do that, come on, I'll back every single one of those, because I want the promo content, but I'll also enjoy and read the actual comics themselves. Although, speaking of which, I really need to read these actual comics, because I want to dive into them. But yeah, 
This is going to be come on comics. They, they announced it. I wasn't going to back it. I don't need comics. I, I like comic books in general, but I, I barely have time to read traditional comics. I don't need this off brand Zombicide Cthulhu's uh, whatever situation that they're bringing to the table here. But then they did the same thing they did in Blood Rage Digital. Not to the same extent. Blood Rage Digital had a lot more going on in terms of the way they fleshed out Blood Rage. But sure, they gave you a line of miniatures. Hey, look at that. We have all these miniatures for, Zomb for Zombicide Second Edition, which I had backed. So yes, I wanted those. I've since gotten rid of Zombicide Second Edition, so I don't need those anymore. We have Cthulhu Death May Die with all these sorts of miniatures and extras and all those things there. That's excellent. Now, I actually have played with these already, and they're excellent, and I'm very happy to have these. And then we have Zombicide Invader, which, even at the time, I knew might not stay in my collection, and I don't think that it will stay in my collection, but it, they'll always be able to sell them for what I paid for it anyway, so I'm not too worried there. I ended up backing this one because Cthulhu Death May Die made it an easy back for me. I'll back the game, I'll jump in it, and if I want, I'll sell the additional content, whether the comics or the miniatures, after the fact to, to whoever wants them, because the secondary market for these things is high. Cthulhu Death May Die was the main draw. The promo characters for that was the main draw. Zombicide Second Edition and Zombicide Invader were kind of, might be nice to have. We'll see how it plays out. And then the comics were a distant third, although, like I said already, I actually have been enjoying them. And seriously, come on. Go ahead and put out another line. I will jump in on it. I specifically recommend Rum and Bones. What are my favorite Capon games these days? Oh, Ankh, Blood Rage. There's so much content. Blood Rage and Ankh comic. There's so many things you can do. There's a ton of stuff out there. A ton of lines you can create. I don't know if they want to further flush out the rules they're starting. Or if they just want to have one for every book. I don't... Or every game. I don't really know. But either way, I would go ahead and get them. Assuming they had miniature content in them. Next up, we have the Animation Collection. Speaking of comics. The Animation Collection, which Kamon announced. And I... I, I wasn't that I was against it, it's just that it's targeting a different audience, it's targeting younger kids, which is nothing wrong with that, but I just didn't need this in my collection, I already had Marvel United, and so Marvel United I always was going to back, no question there, and so they, they announced this, and I was like, I have Marvel United, which is great, I like Marvel United, but it very much is targeting a, a smaller, younger audience with lighter gameplay, and so I was intrigued by this line of games, but I wasn't going to back it. And especially at the price point, by the way, before, although I didn't know the price point at the time, but the price point at $50 for each of these games, $80 for this, it felt like you were paying a lot. You're getting pre-painted miniatures, which is part of the reason, but like, it's just, like, am I getting a toy for my kids? Am I getting a game for myself? I'm not really sure. But the reason I did back this is because I had the opportunity to dive in on a game with, I, uh, I was invited to a TTS game to play the Scooby-Doo the board game with Come On, with, with Come On, with them, with the game, and I really, really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun playing Scooby-Doo the board game online. I thought it was a really well done game. It reminded me of Horrified to a degree of light, simple, yet accessible and rewarding gameplay with Scooby-Doo. And my kids do love Scooby-Doo. And so once I played it and once I could see myself simultaneously enjoying it with, you know, gateway gamers or lightweight or whatnot, it falls into a similar vein as Marvel United. A little less simple in terms of just running and picking it up. But the actual process of collecting the various things you need, moving to locations, gathering stuff, then going to accomplish things, keeping the ghosts or the monsters at bay, and the monsters they, they unlock throughout the course of the campaign, because that is the way these work. Although, this game didn't have the the normal, you know, just tons and tons of stretch goals. Rather, it had daily promos, but it still unlocked a little car, the ghost of Redbeard, the zombie. It unlocked extras that are still worth having, still worth adding to your game, giving you more varied gameplay as you go through the world of Scooby-Doo. And then I grabbed the extras, because once I was there already, they had a full pledge that gave you a bit of a discount. Maybe it'll work for me, maybe, maybe it won't. My kids will still like the th stuff. My kids don't love Looney Tunes. I'd love to pass on my love of Looney Tunes for the kids, to the kids. But yeah, overall, it was one that I wasn't planning on backing until I actually played it, which is the point at which I backed it. Which brings us to number 9, which falls into the same vein. Master of the Universe, the board game, which hasn't even launched yet, but I can tell you that I'm going all in on this game. Because Master of the Universe is a game that, as, as, a, as an intellectual property, as an IP, I have no interest. I never watched it growing up. When Kaman announced the Master of the Universe game, I was like, oh, He-Man and Skeletor and that thing that I never really watched. Maybe I'll back it. I wasn't sure that I wasn't backing it, but I, I didn't see a reason to be pulled in by it. It was an IP I didn't care about, so it came down to the game, the gameplay. And then again, I was invited to a TTS gameplay of the game where I had the opportunity to dive into it. And it was basically the, as if Kamana had taken the World of Smog Rise of Moloch, which is a game that I love, one of the games that I absolutely adore, that my wife and I really enjoy playing. And they took many of the key ingredients from that game, simultaneously making its own unique beast, while taking mechanics and elements from that game and giving me a new version, another one. 
And I really, really enjoyed playing Master of the Universe to the point that we then got we then got our hands on a physical prototype. I have a gameplay I've done with my wife. I have a review that should be going up in a day or two of the game. And whatever that review is, that's material for right now. I mean, I like it. I do like it. But the point is that I'm definitely going all in on this game because uh, to the point that I would argue that I'm not backing this game because I like Master of the Universe. It's the other way around. I specifically started watching the Master of the Universe Netflix show, the revival show, specifically because I played this game and loved it and wanted to learn more about the characters. So the board game inspired the love of the IP, not the other way around. And by the way, have you seen the thing with Netflix where they have a full other Master of the Universe game? Like, it's, it's weird, okay? Here's what we have. We have Arkhan and Kaman, Arkhan Studios and Kaman, both coming out with their own separate Master of the Universe board games. And then we have Netflix and Netflix coming out with two totally different Master of the Universe TV shows. Can someone explain what's going on here? Because, I mean, I'll take it, I'll watch it, I'll give it all a shot, but I am very, very confused. Which brings us to number 10. And number 10 is the only one that's really a bit of a semi-lie to be on this list because it's not that I don't think I'm backing it. In fact, I do think I'm backing it, and I'll explain in a second. But rather that at first, for like a good 30 seconds, I didn't think I had an interest. So let's go ahead and explain. Effectively, Command's coming out with Cyberpunk 2077. Not the card game as it shows over here. This is just the only thing they have up right now. But they recently just announced, they have a video over here where they went ahead and they, I'll just go ahead and hit play on this as we go through it. But they had a video that they just showed in, as they're going through Command Expo and covering all the new content for everything. And they showed this video, uh, which is unlocking or showing you the Cyberpunk 2077 board game they're skipping the card game entirely that's going out, out the window instead they're doing a board game with that world with the world of what is it uh, a project wrecked or a project i think it's project project i can't remember the name whatever it is uh, they're bringing you that that their video game series or whatnot is coming to you in terms of a board game in terms of a board game that i do look forward to playing yet i have no interest in the ip now, the point at which I transferred from having no interest to, oh, I'm going to get that, was I watched this video, Cyberpunk 2077, the board game. I watched it. I was like, oh, another, maybe, I'll get it, possibly, we'll see. And then in the follow-up discussion in the panel that they have over here, they then proceed to talk about how it's going to be an area control game. And that's where, I mean, come on, putting out an area control game. I don't love them all, but it's designed... I don't know if it's designed by Eric Lang or not, to be fair. I don't know if Eric Lang, Eric Lang was involved in the card game. I don't know if he's involved in the board game. But it's enough for me to be interested. I don't care about the IP, but I do care about area control. And so I likely, unless something drastically surprises me, I likely will be backing the Cyberpunk 277 board game that has area control, that has whatever... So, technically, this list is nine command games that I totally wasn't going to back and then did, plus one command game that, for 30 seconds, I was semi-50-50 on whether I would actually get it or not. That's going to be everything. That's going to be a list uh, for, if you're a patron, I will have a patron exclusive video of the command games that I managed to hold strong on and not back. It's a much shorter, more embarrassing list, but that's going to be over on my Patreon. It's like four or five games. It's not a lot. It's really embarrassing, honestly, how many command games I do back and how many I manage to actually walk away from. But either way, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Keep your eyes peeled for Master of the Universe coming from Command in two days. Again, depending on when you're watching this video. It's a really solid game. It's a one versus many. It's a cooperative. It's solo. I've really been enjoying it. Although, again, I like World of Smog Rise of Moloch. So I would say if you've played the World of Smog Rise of Moloch and you didn't like it, I think this has a lot of the same elements and you may not like it as well. But it's one that I'll be paying attention to following the campaign and following the trailing line of stretch goals that eventually gets unlocked one at a time because I like the whores of plastic and I, I do play with them more. That's not a sentence. I do play with them a lot. That's a sentence. In any case, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And as always, have a good one.